I enjoy coming to work every day knowing that clients are depending on me to guide them through uh, whatever financial needs they have. Every client we have is, is different. And so it's really about finding out what's really the most important thing per client. With financial planning, everything is interconnected. So a comprehensive plan means that you're taking care of income needs now, income needs in the intermediate term, and income needs long term. We'll do an asset cycle portfolio. We'll do a risk alized test. We'll do a life insurance audit or a life insurance review. And, and so when we build a deep relationship with our clients, then we can take a step back and then we can look at different options to help them specifically get to their goals. One of the things I feel our job is as advisors is to introduce strategies to clients that maybe they did not know that they were out there. But it's our idea, to, our, our job to come out and say, have you ever thought about this? And the planning is, it's not always about income, but a lot of it is also about the legacy. So the, the element of family is very important to us and it's important to our clients. Hello, this is Financially Speaking. I'm your host, Jeff Bush, and joining me today is my partner, Shannon LaRoss. Uh, Shannon, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the SECURE Act 2.0. And the significance of uh, SECURE Act 2.0 is that it's, a, uh, it's an iteration, if you will, from the original SECURE Act which was enacted right at the tail end of 2019. And I want to, before we dig into 2.0, I want to get into to 1.0, the original SECURE Act. And in the original SECURE Act, there were really two significant uh, pieces that were in there that I, that I think affect a lot of our, a lot of our viewers. Number one, uh, Shannon, if you remember, they changed the RMD age from 70 and a half uh, to 72, and I know for us in the in the financial field that was that was sort of a blessing because that half year was sort of a pain when you went to do calculations. So they changed it from 70 and a half uh, to 72, and the reason for that is uh, well, there's a couple of reasons, but one was people were working longer, and they wanted to push that out to allow people to. Uh, you know, allow them to save for retirement a little bit longer and, and, and preserve those retirement assets a little bit longer. And then the second thing that they did, which is sort of a trade-off that, uh, that, that the IRS made, was that they required uh, the stretch, or they, I, should, I should say they eliminated the stretch out IRA uh, so if you're now if you if you now inherit an IRA from a parent, let's say, uh, instead of being able to stretch the payments out over your lifetime, you have to take out o over ten years. Right. So that was really the the, the thrust of that original act. So um, that's sort of a good segue into our show today, where we're going to talk about 2.0. So and I know Shannon, you've been studying this when we came back from our uh, end of year break, this uh, Secure Act 2.0 was, uh, was sitting on our desk. And mm -hmm. why don't you tell uh, the people that are watching today what, what, what some of the highlights are and, and how this is affecting some of the people that we work with. Sure, uh, one of the major changes that will affect a lot of our clients who are moving into our, or are already in retirement is that the RMD age was once again pushed back. So uh, for those who were not yet age 73 by January 1st of 2023, uh, their RMD age now is 73, which, which is a benefit, I feel, to a lot of our clients who didn't necessarily want to pull as much from their qualified plans, uh, but were forced to. So now they have another year. Um, and then the SECURE 2.0 Act also goes on to... Uh, say that by the year 2033, RMD age will be pushed back to age 75. Okay. So 
That's pretty big, going from 73 to 75, considering yeah. just three years ago it was, uh, it was 70 and a half. So, Shannon, right. if it's now 73, how does that affect the people that are already taking a uh, required minimum distribution, or what we call RMD? RMD, right. Um, it doesn't, if you have already begun taking your RMD, if you're already required to pull the RMD, um, you simply keep doing so um, as you had before. So it only affects those that were not age 73 by the first of this year, 2023. So if you turned, if you're turning 72 this year, mm -hmm. And you thought you had to take an RMD, now you got a reprieve of another year, basically. Exactly. And, and now you could push that first RMD off uh, if you are turning 72 this year. You can push that RMD off until December of 2024 if you'd like to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's, that's good. Uh, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty significant in, in, the, in the element of, of planning especially uh, knowing that you can take a distribution from an IRA. This is just uh, a requirement that uh, the IRS makes where they say you have to take um, money out. And the reason why you have to take it out is why? Well, uh, because they want you to pay the tax dollars yeah. that have yes. been growing. Uh, you know. Okay, so, it's all, yeah, so this is all about taxes. All about taxes. All, the, the, yeah. the money has all been been tax deferred. But the fact of the matter is, there's really two things, the way I look at this. There's really two things here. Number one, uh, we're finding that people are working longer. Uh, and number two, people are living longer. So the, uh, the mortality and, and the, the whole work style uh, or the work, I guess the, the work demographic has, has changed significantly. Uh, since these retirement accounts were, were created many, many years back. Uh, so I think this legislation is significant and that keeps up with the times. It does. It does. And it, um, in addition to pushing back the RMD age, uh, they also have right. reduced the penalty for not taking an RMD as well as part of the 2.0. Yeah, so prior to... Uh, prior to 2.0, what what was the penalty if you didn't if you didn't take your your RMD? Uh, the steep penalty it was uh, fifty percent. Uh, you'd be penalized fifty percent of the amount of the RMD not taken. Um, and then if you did attempt to correct uh, your your issue and you did take your RMD after the deadline, um, that penalty was reduced to twenty five percent. Okay. And what is what is two point look like as far as the uh, the, the penalty on, on non compliance of your RMD? Yeah, so both of those penalty rates were decreased um, as of the first of this year. Uh, now the penalty is twenty five percent for not taking your RMD, and then it was reduced to ten percent if you are able to correct your issue in a timely manner. Okay. I think uh, as as you and I were preparing for this show today, I think. Uh, we both were, I guess, uh, it, it became apparent to us that uh, this SECURE Act is a ra rather complicated document. You know, we're, we're going to be hitting the highlights today, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty complicated document. And I want to stress the importance of planning and the importance of, of what, what we do during the course of the day with, in our practice with our clients. And I want to offer to those that are watching our show today uh, that we'll, we'll give a free consultation uh, into any of our offices. And we do have four locations, and I'll get into that in a minute. But you can, you can reach out to us, and, and we'll put our, uh, our numbers up on the screen, our email and our phone number. And you can call us, and uh, we'll offer a free consultation with either Shannon or me. And we'll go through your individual situation and, and really talk about how the SECURE Act uh, could uh, affect you, okay? Uh, Shannon, what are some of the other things? I know, I know the uh, SECURE Act also talks about uh, 529 plans. It does. Um, so 529 plans, which are one of the popular ways to save for college costs or higher education costs. Um, 529 plans typically uh, 
when you will take distributions from them. If those distributions are for paying for that higher education, then they come out tax-free. Um, you don't have to pay tax on any of the earnings. Uh, but I feel that it's hard to predict as your children are growing up exactly how much college will cost or maybe the child that you're saving for doesn't go on and uh, pursue you know, a typical college degree. Uh, so you wind up leaving extra funds in a 529 and I feel like it inhibits some families from contributing as much as maybe they could or should. Um, so now the Secure 2.0 Act starts to address that issue. Um, now you are allowed to roll over penalty free from a 529 plan up to $35,000 over a lifetime into an IRA, a Roth IRA. Um, so that the earnings remain and continue to grow tax advantaged or tax free. Um, so there are a couple limitations here. Um, the rollovers are subject to the annual Roth IRA contribution limits each year. Um, and uh, as well, the 529 plan does need to have been opened for 15 years prior to requesting any of those rollovers. Okay. And in 15 years, I guess the logic behind that is that you can't just open up a 529 plan for the sole purpose of, right. of getting extra money into the, into the Roth IRA. It has to be for a, you have to open the 529 plan with the intent of using it for college education. Yeah, right, right. It, it's not really... Um it's not really geared for just trying to load a Roth IRA. It really is to help families better prepare for college costs. Okay. That's the intent here. So if it's $35,000, uh, that means that, but you can only put in the limit, mm -hmm. the annual limit. So the annual limit on a Roth IRA right now is what? $6,000? Uh, $6,000 if you're under the age of 50 or you're allowed that extra $1,000 catch-up contribution. So if you're over, if 50. You're over 50, then uh, the annual limit currently is $7,000. Okay, so let's say you're under 50 and it's $6,000. So $35,000, you really have to spread that out over yeah. over six years to right. get it all into the into the Roth IRA. You got it. Which is still a good Which is still a good use of that money. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I mean, it's a good outlet because one of the you know, one of the issues with the 529 plan, as you said, is that you really don't know what your college expenses are going right. to be. And it's true that if you have more than one child, you can roll over those funds from yes. one child to the next. Mm -hmm. But if you're if you're down to your if you're down to your last child, then uh, there's nowhere else to go with the money. Right. Uh, so then you, you would uh, under the previous law, where where there was there really was no law. Uh, you would you would simply take a distribution from that and and right. it would all be taxable exactly right so you would lose all the all the tax benefits that you accrued mm -hmm. on that account over the years would all be lost and you would you would simply then pay tax on all of that correct so it's a pretty significant uh, pretty significant benefit mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other hidden gems in in this secure act that I think our viewers would be uh, interested in. Um, one of the, the changes, the additions that really um, stuck out to me as, as a tremendous benefit is that uh, now previously when saving inside a, an employer qualified plan like a 401k, 457b, 403b, um, employers have the ability to provide their employees with uh, a Roth deferral. So when you make contributions to your, for example, 401k, you could do so on a Roth basis. Um, however, employer matches were always done on a pre-tax basis, meaning that once you pulled out funds from that account, uh, the contributions and the earnings were taxable to you. Uh, 2.0 now allows the employee, employer contribution to be done on a Roth basis meaning that they're taxed now so that when you pull out those funds in the future for income, um, the contribution and all of their earnings come out to you tax-free. Yeah, I think the Roth has really caught on and is mm -hmm. really a very popular vehicle for retirement savings. And I'm, uh, I can remember when the Roth IRA first came on the scene all the way back in 1997, so now we're going all the way back in the in the annals of time here in the history. 
of the Roth. And then the Roth became part of the 401k, I believe, in 2010. So it's been a while that it's been in the, uh, the 401k, and it's not a requirement that there is a Roth provision in a 401k, but we're finding more and more. More and mm -hmm. more employers are catching on and offering that as an option. In addition to having a traditional 401k, having a Roth. Mm -hmm. And what I always tell our, our clients is that if you can build tax-free growth through a Roth IRA, there's really no other good vehicle to do that, no. have tax-free no. growth. Mm -hmm. So that's, very, that's a very powerful thing. And now to have matching money uh, going into a, uh, a, a Roth, I think it's even more powerful. So if you're a young person and you're working and you've got many, many years ahead of you, this is a, this is a great thing, a tax-free thing. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, now I, I, wanted, I want to also alert our, our viewers to uh, some other things that are going on uh, in our company here at Informed Family. Uh, we have been in the news of late. Uh, we went on a little bit of a public relations kick last year, and we've been in the news. I know Shannon's been featured in a number of things, and, and I did a, uh, an interview with KYW, and I've been featured on uh, in an article with USA Today and US News and World Report. And you can see all those, uh, those publications that we've been featured on, which, is, which are also on our website, which is informedfamily.com. But if you want uh, reprints of any of the articles that we've been featured in, uh, give us a call and we'll be sure to, uh, to get that information out to you. The other thing I want to mention is that we do take our show on the road. And we, from time to time, go to various locations in the area. And we do uh, seminars, workshops, on topics that are you know really important to the general public and right now one of those topics is social security so we're going to be doing a social security coming up and we'll put that information up on the screen and if you want uh, information or about coming to our social security workshop you can contact our office for that okay back to the secure act now one other thing that i found on there and shannon if you could expand on this there was, a, there was something in the SECURE Act 2.0 about student loans. Tell us a little bit about how student loans are, are treated in here. So uh, especially when you're first starting out, when you are getting into your career and you're offered the opportunity or automatically enrolled now in your employer's qualified plan, for example, a 401k. A lot of younger people especially are not able to to really contribute much because they're still paying off student loans. It's early in their career, they have a hefty loan balance, and um, those student loans can be, you know, <laughs> a fraction of a mortgage at some point. So for a lot of young people starting out, they're not able to contribute much to their 401k. A lot of them aren't even able to contribute enough to fully receive that employer match. So uh, Secure Act 2.0 tries to address that. So uh, for those employees who have a 401k and are provided that company match, their match can now be based on the loan payments they're making to those student loans. So previously, an employer would only match your contributions to that 401k, generally up to a certain percentage. Um, but now uh, they can also base that match on those payments to that student loan. Yeah, it's just, when I read that, I was really... That, that was amazing. Uh, and that's, that's almost like found money. Mm -hmm. if, you're, yeah. if you're working, and a lot of, like, you know, you mentioned young people. You, you can imagine a lot of times people are uh, graduating from college and they've got a huge amount of debt that they're trying to repay. So uh, that's really their main focus, and rightfully right. so. Uh, so it's really hard to, to, to think about retirement. But if you can have your employer making a match 
to a 401k as if you were actually putting that money in the 401k, but you're really not. You're putting it into uh, re the repayment of your, of your loan. Mm -hmm. So that's really significant. So, uh, but, but you have to be proactive to do that. You have to Certainly. make sure that your employer knows about this loan and goes through, you know, goes through the proper process and go through the proper paperwork. Uh, to do this, but you know, it's it's really something that you should take advantage of, in uh, in participating in your company's four hundred one k. Certainly. Um, one other thing that that kind of struck me, and it was one of the first things that we read in the in this act, is the automatic enrollment in in the four hundred one k. Shannon, tell us a little bit about that and how you think that's going to impact. Uh, overall participation in, in the 401k plans? I think that prioritizing our finances is something that most of us uh, tend to push off. Um, it's, it's not something that we all prioritize. So it may be something, you know, that you have a, a mental checklist or it's on your mental checklist to do, you know, start saving for retirement, open this, this plan. But I think it's one of the things people tend to procrastinate. So uh, the SECURE Act addresses that, and it has increased the um, provision for automatic enrollment in your company's qualified retirement plan, which means that essentially an employee doesn't have to do anything to open that 401k for themselves. It's automatic. Usually it occurs after you have been at your position or your job for a certain number of months or so and you will automatically be enrolled, and then they choose a percentage too. Uh, it's something small, maybe three to 5% that um, you, know, you are initially contributing, but you have control over that. You can increase it, or you can uh, discuss with your employer um, you know, whether you can make those contributions on a Roth basis, or what their match is. And at that point, you also could discuss if you are making those student loan payments. But I think the point here is that you are automatically enrolled. You're automatically saving. Um, so for those people that have procrastinated this for several years, um, it now gives them a leg up uh, because you don't have the option of procrastinating. Uh, yeah, and it's you, just been accruing. And you have to, you, you can opt out if you want you to. Can, but you, you can opt out. But you have to take the act of saying, exactly. oh, no, don't, don't take money out of my paycheck and put it in the 401k. I don't want to do that. I don't want to exactly. participate. Yep. And the statistic that I read was when they, when they did that, that it changed enrollment this is this is on uh, as it pertains primarily to uh, lower wage earners mm -hmm. it increased the participation from 19 percent to 75 percent that's mm -hmm. very significant yeah. and I think in the world that we live in today we have to take more control over our retirement finances so gone are the days, and I, I always call it, th this. I always say, this is not your father's retirement. Right. Okay. We're not retiring with a great big pension. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Social Security is, you know, uncertain at best. You know, it used to be, like we talk about our, you know, our forefathers, if you will. They were retiring with a nice big pension and a nice big Social Security check, and they didn't have to worry about, they didn't worry about the stock market. But that's not what is being faced with people that are working today. Not at all. So you have to have control, some element of control over your own retirement accounts. And what better way than by doing it through your employer's plan? And if we can make it automatic, I just think I, that's, that was one of my favorite things about this whole act was the automatic participation. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So... What are, are there any other uh, highlights, things that, that, uh, that we want to make our viewers aware of in, in this uh, Secure 2.0 Act of 2022? Uh, I think there was just one more uh, provision that stood out to me because um, I feel like it should have been there all along. Um, and that's that uh, the 10% penalty for withdrawals from a qualified plan, uh, that penalty is now waived for those that are diagnosed with a terminal illness. And, and we see this uh, usually in life insurance plans, things like that. Um, but I think uh, it's finally come around that that penalty is now also being waived 
from qualified retirement plans as well. Yeah, so is that, uh, are there any limitations on that? So so if you have, let's say you have, you could have, you could have $200,000 saved up in your 401k. Would you be able to take all of that out if you were terminally ill? I'm not certain. Um, I know that the, the act was recently passed, and I do expect some elaboration yeah. to continue coming um, as, it, as it frequently does, some dollar figures. So uh, I'm not certain offhand what the limitation is, but I do expect further information to come regarding yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think the important, the couple of disclosures here, I think that's important for, for our viewers, and that is that it's always important to seek the advice of a tax advisor uh, when you're trying to make any important changes like this. And, you know, we're, we're interpreting the, the SECURE Act as we see it as uh, financial advisors. But, you know, a lot of it, this is this is all still really brand new. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to interpret it. And, you know, some of the uh, partnerships that we have, you know, we're trying to get clarification on mm -hmm. some of this stuff. Uh, but I think it's important. No, the over, I think the overriding theme here this morning, or it should be that uh, when you're uh, when you're doing financial planning, that you have you're you're relying on uh, the advice and the expertise of of professionals, so that you're not trying to just do this on your own because Certainly. it is it it is it is a complicated thing. I mean these these acts are you know pages and pages and pages of stuff that's written. You know, by you know, in in a in a language, it's not always easily understood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and even us. I mean, we have resources as well. Um, you know, I think part of the services that we offer to our clients is not just our own knowledge and education, but knowing that we have other resources that we have relationships with. So if we have questions or if we need to go for further clarification or if we're waiting for something like a SECURE Act to actually provide us all the information and ramifications, that we have resources at our disposal as well that we can go and get those definite answers for our clients. Yeah, I think one other thing that I want to talk about a little bit here this morning is the uh, the catch-up provision on the 401k which right now is six thousand five hundred dollars okay. and that and so what a cat what the catch-up provision is designed to do is if you're over a, if you're a certain age uh, in other words if you're over the age of 50 um, you can put in some additional money. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's designed to say, okay, you're getting closer, so we're gonna allow you to put a little bit more in. So right now it's $6,500. That's going to change to $10,000, mm -hmm. but not right away. <laughs> right. It looks like, the way, the way I understand that, that's not going to happen until 2025. Correct. Is that your understanding? It is, yep. 2025. So, and then from that point, it's going to be indexed for inflation. Right. So then we, so that's, that's important because then we don't have to worry about legislation or an act of Congress to have that right. change. It's just automatic. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's $10,000 and we just had, you know, 5% inflation. We're going to increase that by 50 bucks to account for inflation. So I think that's a, that was a good thing. And I believe that the inflation um, component also applies to the catch-up provision of the IRA contribution. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the IRA, so there's also a catch-up in the IRA that I think is $1,000. $1,000 currently. Yeah, yeah. So, so that will also begin getting uh, getting indexed up. So I think the way I see the SECURE Act, this is all good news for the yeah. consumer. Yeah, I think I think it's all pretty beneficial. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I don't see anything in here that uh, so you, you read it and you think, oh, well, gee, this is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing, you know, why are they, why are they doing this? As opposed mm -hmm. to the the original uh, Secure Act, which which we touched on at the top of the show, where they they basically are eliminating the stretch out IRA. That right. one, that one, 
in our practice, that one really hurt because mm -hmm. that that one was, and really what they're trying to do is eliminate the, you know, perpetuating these IRA accounts for you know forever. So they make you take it out over uh, ten years if you're if you're inheriting an IRA. Well, uh, Shannon, I, our time is uh, is rapidly coming to a finish here today, and boy, it went fast as we talk about the Secure uh, 2.0 Act, and that's because there's so much in here, and we could probably spend another show going through all the uh, yeah. all the nooks and crannies of uh, of the Secure Act. But I think we want to make it pretty uh, pretty clear to our viewers that. Uh, we're here uh, for anybody who wants more information on uh, the SECURE Act or any other pertinent uh, financial topic. Uh, we're going to offer the free consultation for anybody who wants some more information so you can contact our office. Uh, with all that being said, we're going to sign off. This is Financially Speaking.